Where's Smoke? No Smoke? Probably up in the press ledge. Oh, the shit. That's a better view out there. But you don't need him. You got us. You guys know I like to smell the most. <laughs> love, love the smoke. <laughs> yeah. You know, Schmo asked me questions when all y'all asking Izzy and uh, Pereira and them questions. Knowing damn well I talk the best. <laughs> well, first off, how you feeling after that performance out there? I feel pretty good. Feel pretty good. Glad to be back in the win column. You know, I didn't get my dick sniffed today and I didn't break my hand, so feels good. And apparently, it smelled like weed out there. It looked like you uh, asked it your opponent. Did it did smell like weed. Did no? Did nobody else smell that shit? Like, like I mean, bro, it smelled like as soon as I went out there, somebody sparked the fuck up. I was like, bro, is my uncle smoking weed out there? I swear, it was good. Shout out to Patrick Swayze. That must be what you what you asked uh, Mr. Trump when you hopped over the, de the 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 cage to talk to those two, huh? No, I hopped over the desk to talk to Dana, and then I just told uh, Mr. Trump it was nice to meet you, Mr. President. And then after I hopped back over, I realized I didn't even shake Mike Tyson's fucking hand. So <laughs> shit, I'm a dumbass, but I was just lit. <laughs> well, let's talk about the performance out there. I mean. Uh, Obviously, the leg kicks was playing a factor for a while there, too, where he was kicking yours, and then you kicked his back as well. Yeah. Um, was it getting to a point where you felt like the legs are starting to compromise your ability to, to throw strong punches in there? Was he starting to get that bad? No, I never even uh, wanted to throw a strong punch. So to mm -hmm. knock him out was pretty cool. But uh, I didn't go in there with the intentions to, to hit him with the right hand. We actually threw the right hand in the back, and uh, it was my first time putting on little gloves. And I, I hit the pad, and I was like, damn, that shit hurts. So, uh, remind you, I did break it, so that didn't feel good, so going out there, I was actually, I actually messaged my mom right before I went out there, and I was like, man, should I even be fucking fighting? She was like, I told you to stay home. So, uh, glad I didn't listen to mom this time. <laughs> have, you, have you called her since to, to tell her that yeah, it was right for you to fight? No, it's been all media since, so I'm pretty sure uh, when I get on the phone with her, she's going to be like, I told you you was going to be good, you know, you know how moms is, they always got to be right. <laughs> How about that back fist that you, you caught him with when he had your leg and you just kind of threw that back fist and actually hit him and actually hurt him a little bit? You, you know, it's funny. Me and Juggernaut Suge over here, we actually we actually was working at about like a week or two ago. He had my foot in the air. No, it was actually the other day at practice. He had my foot in the air and I was just going like this with my hand, like, get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back. And I mean, in the fight, get the fuck back actually works uh, against him. Get the fuck back just meant me having one dead leg and one leg in the air. So... Thank God. <laughs> and uh, I guess, I mean, a win over him, I mean, what does that do for you, you think, right now in this division? I mean, does it help you to call some people out, or does it just feel good to, to get it'd another be, knockout? It'd be, it'd be nice to be uh, sitting with a number, but if I don't, it's okay. Uh, I had a good time in there when I was in doubt. I pivoted out. Shout out to D. Uh, my boy, Cowboy, talked my ear off before I went out there, got me back calm because I was feeling some type of way. Uh, so overall, just, I mean, it just feels good to get a dub with the team and shit. If you guys know the crew that's out there with me, they've been with there with me since Contender Series and since my first UFC fight, so uh, and even on local level. So just feels good to get a dub with the squad, and shit, feels good to be back on top. And obviously the stoppage was right, you know, but obviously uh, Ponzinibbio when he got up, he seemed a little bit upset. <laughs> did you did he get a, you get a chance to talk with him afterwards? Uh, man, look, shout out to Ponzinibbio, a tough guy, uh, vet in the game and stuff like that. But uh, at the end of the day, he was definitely out of there, and. Um, I was a little mad at him because I kept asking him if he smelled weed and he wouldn't answer me, so <laughs> shit, fuck it. And then at the end, you called out Jorge, you wanted that BMF belt, but if, yeah, hey, man, what happened this week? What was the genesis of that and why, why, why the, the if you If you ask me that question in front of Dana, what would he say? He'd say not ask about it. All right. So but that was before the fight. He didn't want to break up this fight. Well, you know what? Uh, when he's ready to talk about it, we'll talk about it. When, when Jorge's ready to talk about it or when Dana's ready to talk about it? When Dana's ready to talk about it. <laughs> Jorge's not my boss. Dana is. <laughs> but then you called him out. So is that what you want next or you want, you just want to get back Man, in there? I'll take, I take whatever they give me next. But uh, we all know that if, if Jorge loses this fight, he's probably going to retire. But if he doesn't retire and you guys sit up here and think about who's a better, who's the next person to hold a BMF belt, I mean, I do a lot of badass shit. You know what I mean? Uh, whether it's a carjacking and I stop that, whether it's a... Uh, 18 wheeler flipped over and me pulling a guy out whether it's somebody pull, whipping out a pistol at a sushi bar you know what i mean whether it's somebody on 7th street trying to pop some shit and me popping shit back i mean whatever the case may be i'm down for it you know what i mean so if it's gangster i do gangster well if it's respectful i do respectful well uh if it's professional i don't always do that got good but fuck it you know what i mean i just think i do everything better than george so why not if it doesn't go his way and he does lay the gloves down and he does retire 
is there respect with you for him or is for Jorge or do you just not even want to think about him because you wouldn't get a fight or do you have respect for his career and what he's done if he does well? I, I, you know, everything that he did before he started sucker punching people, I was a huge fan of. I was a big fan of Jorge Masvidal before he started doing all this bullshit. But uh, after that, I just kind of lost taste of it. And then uh, the the lies, uh, he's cloud chasing. Uh, I don't really care about clout. I want your BMF belt and that's it. Uh, simple as that. Awesome. Congrats, Kevin. Thank you, brother. Mr. Holland over here. How you doing, uh, David Power, congratulations on the big win. Uh, what it what it seemed like is you were a lot more comfortable in there. Uh, it just seemed like you you know you were able to let your creativity show. Uh, you looked a lot more loose as you're watching the TV and seeing George uh, fight. But nevertheless, you looked so comfortable in there. Uh, what was it like to get your glow back to you know feel that comfortable and to actually uh, go out there and just do your thing? I think I was comfortable in the Wonder Boy fight. I think I got uncomfortable after I broke my hand. So to correct you a little bit, I think I'm always comfortable in the cage. I have a lot of cage fights. So. You know, uh, what's your name again? Uh, David. Yeah, your turn, bro. How was your hand going into this fight? Uh, it was. Uh, I thought it was great until I put those little gloves on. It didn't feel too good. So, uh, I think I need a couple more months of uh, some smart recovery and stuff like that before I jump back inside the cage. So, fight international fight week probably wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. But shit, uh, honestly, I'd probably fight in a month if it was Michael Chiesta. <laughs> And I saw, obviously, you hopped over the cage and spoke to Dana White. What did you exactly say to him? Uh, I said, next time, can I please talk a little bit more at the press conference? <laughs> I said, you know, I love you, right? Let's go get some new sneakers. Then I said, what's up, Mr. President? Then I hopped back over. Then I looked back and I was like, oh, shit, my bad, Tyson. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just had fun, bro. It was just a good time. Nothing but fresh air and opportunity out there, and I try and take advantage of all of it. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, that's a wrap. Hey, my guy back there, you got to work on your questions.